Hello. Uh, today we're going to talk about weight, mass and gravity. So, in the simplest terms, the gravitational force is the force that makes all objects attract towards one another. Just like these two objects here. Now, in most instances, because the gravitational force is an incredibly weak force, it's one of the weakest forces that we, we have discovered in the universe, um, because of that, the attraction between any two everyday objects, like uh, these two pots of paint, the, the attraction between these two objects is so tiny, it's almost beyond our capability of measuring. So gravity usually only becomes interesting when you're talking about really massive objects. Things like the Earth and the Moon, or the Sun and all the other planets in our solar system. You need really large objects for gravity to get interesting because it's a very weak force. Now, that gravity provides a number of things for us. On Earth, the gravity causes things to accelerate downwards. So, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, if you let go of something above the ground, it swiftly accelerates towards the floor. And that is due to gravity. It also provides objects with weight. Uh, weight is essentially the pull force acting on something that then makes it accelerate towards the ground. So if you ever talk about weighing an object, this is one of those phrases people often get mixed up in everyday language. We talk about weighing an object and then say, well, it weighs so many grams or kilograms or pounds or ounces. And all of those are actually units of mass instead. And they do not mean the same thing. So whereas weight is a force that depends upon an object's location, for instance, if you look at, look at the space around the Earth, then if you were to draw field lines for, the, for gravity, which you don't, strictly speaking, need to do for GCSE, but I think it illustrates this point nicely, if you were to draw field lines for gravity, they would look something like this. Lots of straight lines going in towards the centre of the Earth. Strictly speaking, it's the centre of the mass of the Earth, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So, if you did something like this, then you can see, I'm not drawing them all on, on there, that if you're further out, say you're here, then those for, those field lines are going to be much further apart by the time they, by the time you're looking that far out from the planet, and so the gravity is weaker. The closer in towards the planet you are, the stronger the gravity is. So we're, where we are on the surface of the Earth, that's about as strong as the gravity gets for Earth. Um, but if you were out, um, say, where halfway between here and the moon, then whilst there is still gravitational force affecting your body, it would be much, much less than it is here on the surface. And in fact, very minute fluctuations in, in the strength of gravity gravity can be detected depending on how high up above sea level you are. Now, centre of mass. Centre of mass is a really important idea when you're talking about weight. If you could think of the mass of an object being concentrated into one point, where would that one point be? Now for symmetrical objects, that one point is where the lines of symmetry of the object intersect. So if I had something like a sphere, and by the way, thank you for giving me an excuse to act like a three-year-old and buy some Play-Doh. Um, I, I don't think I've even opened a can of Play-Doh since I was probably about six. Um, so this this kind of green sphere we have here, um, its lines of symmetry, as you can imagine, um, all intersect in the centre of this sphere. And if I turn it aside, we will get much the same kind of impression where the, the line of lines of symmetry intersect right here in the center. So for this for this round round-ish spherical object, the center of mass is going to be right there in the middle of the object. And so we can treat the weight of this object as acting down from that center of mass in the center of the object. Now, what about slightly more complicated objects. So here we have um, a rough cube. Um, my sculpting skills are only so good after all. Um, now in this sort of shape again we have some lines of symmetry 
which do make some things much easier for us. So if we draw a line down there and a line across here. In fact, we have some other lines of symmetry you can fill in as well. And once you've drawn several of those lines of symmetry, I don't think I can think of any other lines of symmetry for this particular shape, then that point in the middle where they intersect, that is the center of mass for this object. Now, because this, this is a three-dimensional object, if we did the same thing on this side, we would find that where these two lines intersect in the very center of the object between this line and this line, that point in the middle is the center of mass for this object. And again, if you're looking, if you were looking at this side sideways and you had the ground, say here, beneath the object, then you could see that the weight of this cube would act through that center of mass. One last shape that might interest you. What if your object has some hollows to it? Where would you consider the center of mass? What if we had something like this ring here? Is the center of mass in the, in the Play-Doh or is it somewhere else entirely? Now the center of mass is just used for when we're, when we're thinking about gravity and where the wave force is acting on, 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 on objects. It doesn't necessarily have to actually be where there is any mass. It's just where you can treat the mass as though it is concentrated. So for a more unusual object like this ring, you actually find the center of mass is about there. It's in the very center of the object. If you imagine the kind of radial symmetry of this shape, you would find that the center of mass is right there in this empty bit of space in the middle of this ring. So if you were to be looking at how this ring, uh, how weight acts on this ring, or how the weight of this ring um, makes it accelerate or fall towards the ground, you would treat the center of mass as though it was lined up with the center, this, this little gap in the middle of the hole. Okay, so that's center of mass. One last thing to look at, and that's the equation for weight. And this really helps me understand, and actually remember the difference between mass and weight, because they're both in the equation, so you can see how they relate. So mass, how much stuff you've got. By now you should be very familiar with the unit for mass, which is, in physics, the kilogram. Now chemists may use grams as their standard unit, but physicists we use the SI unit, kilogram. Now, then we've got the weight. Now, weight is a force. So if you think to yourself, what's the unit for force? There is only one unit for force, and that is the Newton. So the unit for weight is Newtons. So the next time you hear somebody say, I'm going to go weigh this, I don't know, this bag of rice for cooking tea, or whatever it may be, then you can not correct them and tell them it should be in newtons rather than grams because that's not the way you make friends um anyway gravitational field strength now the unit for that is easy to work out based on what you've got here to find the gravitational field strength you would have to take the weight in newtons and divide it by the mass so if you have newtons divided by kilograms well, actually, that's the unit for gravitational field strength. The unit for gravitational field strength is newtons divided by kilograms. Newt newtons per kilogram. There is another unit for gravitational field strength based on acceleration, but for right now, this makes the most sense. Okay, um, one other little note. The gravitational field strength on Earth, there's two numbers you need to know. One is the one we use for calculations, and in most calculations, unless you're given a different number, you can assume that Earth's gravitational field strength is 10. Essentially, it's just rounded up to make it easier to do calculations. That'd be 10 newtons per kilogram. But you need to be aware that a more accurate answer is that it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Compared to the Earth, the Moon is much smaller, has a much weaker gravitational field. In fact, it has a gravitational field approximately one-sixth that of Earth, and its gravitational field strength is 1.6 newtons per kilogram. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, or pop and see me in school, and, uh, and I can help you with them. Bye.